Good evening, YouTube channel. It is Belmont here again. And we are going right into... Yeah. Get ourselves another weapons hole from the Belmonts. Welcome to part four. And what you see before you is some UST products. Well, I picked these up uh, about three Christmases ago. They were on sale, and uh, I actually do like the UST. Yeah, it's a bigger knife. Lots of paracord on there, if you notice. Don't know if it's 550 or not. And a baby knife. Now, personally, i got to admit, these things are light. These things are small enough to throw. Would I necessarily depend upon one for survival and prepping? Possibly. I'm not always a big fan of serrated... But it's on there. I deal with it. The sheaths for the two knives. There are ferrocinium rods. Well, that was a brief pause. And you know how I love my SOG. This is a lovely three-piece SOG throwing knife set of the Fling. It's got nice double-sided balance. Throws really good. Sinks into the target right to the heart. Also comes with a decent enough sheath. It's big, wide-bellied. Holder for the belt. This was the first set of SOG knives that I uh, acquired. Yes, these um, found a home via an open package on the shelf. Yeah, I gotta say. That was sloppy security on their part. Now, these are thick enough that it almost feels like you could wrap paracord around these and use it as an individual fighting knife. And you could. Nice single blade side. Also comes with a pretty decent sheath to go with it. This is the SOG Spirit. It's a spear. And I do not recommend trying to throw this with this handle. Be smart. Attach it to a uh, 5 to 6 foot length wooden mop or paint handle or go to your local hardware store and buy you a really, really good quality uh, pole and mount it to new metal. That is exactly what this uh, threading is for. Secure it with a uh, flathead screwdriver and it works very well. I also love my Gerber knives. This was found at a pawn shop back down south. It's helpful. Nice little sharpness to it. This I actually found over by where I like to eat back down south. 
Me and the little lady went for lunch one day. We crossed the parking lot, walking, across the uh, grass and tree line, and there sitting on the ground was a fucking knife. Had no blood on it, no sheath. I picked it up, put it in my inside jacket pocket, and, well, came in handy. I applied a uh, simple lanyard for it. It's the grip, and hold on to it. And that was another nice little pause. And what we have here are some beautiful full tang frost cutlery buoys. The nice little hardwood handle. And that's a peened pin to hold it together. Nice. Here's another one. This, unfortunately, came without a sheath. So, the sheath, unofficially, has been a piece of cardboard for the last several years. It's nice. Nice big blade. Made in China, obviously. Now... I'm not too particularly proud of these next four, since, well, one, while on the surface this would be a lovely Tanto blade knife, unfortunately, it has a rat tail tang. Now, it's from Bud K, but I picked this up in a pawn shop for five dollars, and you know, when I got it, it was pretty decent. I haven't used it a whole lot, haven't tried to beat it up. But, you know, if rat tail tangs, if you have the screw on pommel, eventually, you know, that does happen. Or it's going to turn sideways and be loose. If this could be attached to something else or a larger piece of metal welded on, then you could simply wrap it in paracord and you'd have you a good, hefty Tanto blade. This MTEG buoy does look like it's seen better days. This is another pawn shop purchase. It is also an MTEG knife. It's light, it's 440 stainless, painted. It's still relatively sharp. And these other two are, well, these are your survival buoy knives. Here's a fun fact, that once upon a time, you could actually order these in the back of a comic book, back when you were seeing, you know, Rambo movies, and, you know, it has the compass on it, it has the screw head pommel, and it does have a uh, small amount of supplies in it. Same for this one. This was a also a th a pawn shop purchase. Its blade is lighter. It's a bit sharper. Has a more grooved sawtooth design, and it looks neater. These here are our ceremonial knives. Yes, I am not Christian. I'm not Catholic. I actually consider myself pagan and left-hand path. 
and these are somewhat Shinzi Athames. This one was a gift from a friend that I took as payment for, um, well, well, it's another story. This was picked up in a novelty store and cost $20. It looks nice on the surface, but single blade, cosmetic gem, it's a uh, Celtic-ish by design, so I went with it. While these could be very misconstrued as a weapon, well, they can be used as a weapon, just not quite successfully. I do, however, believe in Owning a flare gun. It works well enough. I have not had to put it to a test, but I've had it for close to nine years since 2010. And yes, I do know there might be some people who say, well, you know what? You're supposed to replace those flares after a certain amount of time. Right. But here's the thing. They don't really expire. These chemicals in here, which are magnesium and phosphorus, they don't really deteriorate. As long as you keep them in good condition. Just like bullets. The powder doesn't expire in those bullets. I have shotgun shells that are from 2013. They're still good to go. Now, for the closing of this video, yes. This is a toy cap gun. And these are caps. And clearly you can tell what they contain. Red phosphorus and potassium. These are considered children's toys but in prepping, they can be handy for making a loud noise, or if you had nothing but this in your hands, and someone grabs a hold of you, putting this next to his ear and popping off a few caps, can definitely rupture someone's eardrum. And, you know, as we were growing up, you know, you have the red phosphorus caps, you know, you have the little plastic cap gun, the circle of eight on there, and and they're fun. But used in a different way, you can do a lot of damage to someone's ears. And this is not the end of the weapons hold videos, but this is a precursor to the beginning of a little bit about what goes inside my mind.